Hello and welcome to lesson number two in the Ben and Boz Microsoft Excel video series. I'm Boz. I'm Ben. Thanks for joining us again. And in this video, the goals of this one is it's a lot about formatting and printing. So we're really going to work on uh, just, just making our Excel sheet look a lot better and then learn how to print it effectively as well. And so specifically what we're going to be going through is showing you how to bold and add italics as well as highlighting multiple cells at once, placing some lines or borders around cells, and then using the print preview. Now that's what we have on the list, but there might be a couple bonus functions depending on how things go. You never know what we're gonna pull out, so we'll better see. watch closely. All right, let's get at it. Let's get after it. So we have the Ben and Boz Incorporated balance sheet here as of 12-31-2018. And first thing that I see is that I wanna make this bold. So Boz, what do you think? What's the best way to do that? Uh, I'd, go, I'd go right to the control B. There's a way you can do it using your mouse, but I mean, really all they got to know is the control B. On that Don't one. even bother. Just straight control B, control B, and control B. I bet there was a quicker way to do that. You had to do that three different times. That was actually a little bit tedious, and there is a quicker way to do that. So I'm going to hit control Z three times just to undo what I've done before. And now when I want to highlight multiple cells at once, like in this case, I'm going to hold the shift key and then move the down arrow. And as you can see, now I'm highlighting all three of those cells at once. You could have done that with your mouse, but that is, is really too slow, and especially if you were highlighting dozens or hundreds of, uh, of rows or columns at the same time, you, you'd really see the benefit of, of doing it. And we'll show you more about that in a moment. But so yeah, you've highlighted the three, and now if you hit Control-B, is it all gonna happen at once? Look at that, it all happens at once. Tell you what, while it's highlighted, throw a Control-I on there for me too. All right. Control I. Italicize it as well. So look at that. Control B and Control I. Pretty good. Pretty good. Helps us with bold and italics whenever we want. Yep. So now let's move on to if we want to highlight a whole series here. And in this case, I already have everything in comma format, but let's just pretend maybe I wanted a couple decimals. And now usually financial statements don't want that, but let's just say we want a couple decimals here. Yeah. Absolutely. So if I held the shift key and arrow down, okay, it works. I can highlight everything, but there's actually a faster way. Yeah, and yet, you know, if you only have a couple, that's fine, and that's probably what I would do. You know, absolutely don't use your mouse, but to do that one a little faster, how I like to do it is you'll hold down the shift, and then you'll press the end key, and then you'll press the down arrow key. And then once you've done that, they're all highlighted. Maybe go click on that you know, throw a comma, or you've got the commas in there, maybe add a couple decimals. So these two buttons up here with the blue arrow uh, pointing to the left and the blue arrow pointing to the right. If I hit this first one, it's showing me I'm going from one zero to two zeros. And as you can see, the more I hit that, every time I do, I add, de add a decimal. Yep. Whereas this other one here is going from two down to one. So every time I hit that, I get rid of some decimals. Yeah, so that, that's how I want to highlight it at all. What would you have done? Because there's a second way to do it. There is, and actually before we move on to that, if some of you had some issues where if you held shift and then touched the end key and then the down arrow and it didn't highlight everything, you might want to try hitting your function button. So I've done that before where my function button was on the other one and the end key didn't actually work. So it really just depends on your keyboard. But um, if it's not working for you, try hitting that function key and trying it again. And if you don't know what the function button is, I don't even have one of those on my keyboard. So if it worked fine for you, oh, I do have one actually. Thanks for pointing that out, Ben. Uh, it's it's it, the one that's right next to the control key I on never the bottom it, left. Though, so I never, yeah, I didn't know I had it. It's exciting. So you learn learning new things every day. That's right. But, so what um, would you have done then? Okay. All right. So for me. I don't really use the end key all that often. Instead, I use the control and the shift key. So if I start at this 5,000, I can hold control and shift, and then just the down arrow and it goes all the way down for me. Then you could add commas. If you wanted to bold them all, just control B as an example. Control whatever, B, yeah, control whatever you I. Um, if I want it to be in dollars, I could hit this dollar sign that's up here. And that puts it in dollars for me. I don't me. like dollars. Get rid of that. Control Z that. Ooh. I don't Control like that. Z. Get rid of that, he says. All right. None of that. None of that here. And I, I think that more people do use that control compared to the end. So the one that Ben just showed you is what you'll... What more people just seem to like it. It's kind of just where they're set up on your keyboard. The end key is nice on my keyboard. But, uh, and uh, if you want to use the control key without the shift, that also works. So right now, I'm at the top. If I hit control and down arrow, it jumps to the end for me. 
If I hit control and down arrow again, it jumps to the beginning of the next sequence. So that control key is nice because it jumps from sequence to sequence for me from the beginning to the end of the range. Yeah. The one thing, let's let's show them on this one, because that was how we, we kind of highlight, you know, a group of those few cells. How about that column E? Where in column E, as an example, maybe we just want to put two decimals with all of those dollar all those dollar amounts. Just do it all for the whole column at the same time. Sure. You know, what would you what would you do at that point then? All right. So the fast way to do it is to hit Control and Spacebar. Control and Spacebar highlights the um, highlights the entire column at once. If I were to just use the control shift and down, you can see I'd have to highlight each section one at a time, but that control space bar just takes care of it for me. And nice. then I can hit comma, and you said you wanted a couple decimals on there? Sure, it looks, yeah, just anything. There we go, show them, and so. we got a couple decimals. So yeah. usually when you see financial statements, they'll have the commas, so you're gonna wanna get used to that comma button, but they don't have the decimals behind it. And so you'd hit the remove decimal button or decrease decimal a couple times. Sure. So that's how you highlight an entire column. Can you highlight an entire row as well? Absolutely. Control space was the entire column. Shift space bar is the entire row. It's not like you wouldn't do that on this file here, but just, just for general knowledge. So but future reference. You, yep, we'll probably use that one in a, in a future one. <laughs> but I don't know. I you know I, it looks good, but I think I'd feel better if there were some borders on it right now, Ben. Yeah, I do too. I think. Right, maybe above our total current assets and total current liabilities, and maybe even above total liabilities, we should add some single borders single to that. Border. Single borders. Single borders. Definitely. So the single border is a sign that, or the one line, I should say, is a sign that we've added or subtracted some things to come up with the 15500 for total current assets. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to click on the cell with 500 here. Then I move my mouse over, and this little drop down. Our border button is up here. Probably defaults to the single border if they've never used it before, so they could just click on it. But yeah, mm -hmm. also hit that drop down, and you can see it's bottom, like top, line, bottom left, border. right. There's a whole bunch of different options. So I'm just going to click on bottom border because that's what we want here. Yeah. And now I've set it for bottom border, and you can see right in this cell, I have a nice bottom border. Nice. And now if I want to go over to total current liabilities or total liabilities. It's already set at bottom border, so I don't even have to hit the drop down again. I can just click on bottom border and go over here and click Wait, on bottom Wait, before border. you hit it there, show them the shortcut. On oh, the board, so. so you might be asking yourself, Ben and Boz, you guys hate using the keypad. Why are you doing that right now? Well, there is a shortcut for it, but it's a little bit more complicated. So if you hit Alt, and you can see on top here, we have F for file, H for home, all those different letters. Well, the border was on the Home tab, so Alt, H, and then a border, it starts with B, so we want to use it, there's a little B there, B, and then what border do we want? We just select the correct letter. So we want a bottom border, so I'm going to hit letter O, and lo and behold, we have a bottom border there. Yeah. That one's that's a little tougher for some people to remember all that. I honestly don't always use those, but we just want to expose you to them, so you can choose which ones that you're doing repetitively, where it can save you time. But I think we should throw, you know, right with uh, total assets and then the total liabilities and equity, I think we should throw a single border above that number and a double border beneath it. Ooh, it's, it's getting fun, but I'm going to do it the shortcut way just because it can help us practice a little nice. bit. So, nice. So, again, Alt, H, B for the borders, and then Boss said he wanted a top border as well as a double bottom border. Mm -hmm. So top with double bottom, that's letter U. So I'll hit letter U, and look at that. I got a top and double bottom border right there. And if they wanted to do that one with total liabilities and equity without using that shortcut, where would they go to then? Then you just use your mouse, move over to the drop-down box, again, under the home ribbon and the font area, and then you see it's top and double bottom border. You can just click on that, and you're good to go. I think it looks great, and as much as I'd want to be done, I think I want to print this thing now. Okay. Now, printing doesn't happen a ton, but it does happen enough that it's worthwhile to figure out how to format this thing in a printable, readable way. I'm a lot older than you. We used to print all the time. So we've got a little bit more green since, uh, since my early days. All right. Well, Boz is a leader now in being green, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. So what I did is I moved over to this File tab up on the top, clicked on File, and then clicked on Print. And you see we have a print preview right here. Yep. 
Now there is a faster way. So instead of clicking on that, if you just wanted to hit Control and P, that would give us a print preview as well. Um, honestly, I don't use Control P that often because we don't print that often. But um, if you want the shortcut, that's the way to do it. Yep, absolutely. And this one we added pre-formatted uh, with a couple different things in here. You can see it looks uh, it looks really pretty. Um, and if we unselected a couple of those things, so go to. Um, Right now we had it set to actually print on one page. It usually defaults to not doing that and it usually defaults to no grid lines either. So you can see Ben went to no scaling, hit page setup, went to the sheet and uh, unselected grid lines and he hits OK. And you can see it, it didn't look very good. It didn't look as nice as when we initially showed you. So again, which, if you have something like this, uh, we could either do what we just did um, and so go ahead and, and once again, where we have the, the no scaling, change that to fit on one page and then click page setup and go to the sheet, the far right and, and click grid lines and, and click that and click OK. Now it's nice and pretty. If you don't like that, what's the other thing we could have done there, Ben? So maybe if you didn't want it vertically, you think it looks a little bit better um, the other way, you could actually switch the orientation from portrait orientation to landscape orientation. And so you see in this case, now it's a little bit more spread out. We have some more space. It doesn't seem as crunched in. And so we're able to do that. And they both look good, I think, Buzz. I, I think it looks great. I think it's a wrap. What do you think? Let's call it a day. Thanks for joining us for lesson two, and we hope you'll tune in again next time. Cheers.